Thanks for tuning in. Uh, the purpose of this video is really two main things. It's to go over a problem we didn't have time to go over in class. So this gives you, you know, another practice problem to take a look at. And maybe a good way to challenge yourself would be to pause the video, look at it on your screen and see if you can do it and then turn it back on. The second purpose of the video is to kind of just give you an overview of what I want what I want you to do over Thanksgiving, which isn't too much. I didn't I'm not loading you up. I don't think I'm loading you up. Um, so and I'm hoping you're having a good Thanksgiving or will have a good thanks or did have a good Thanksgiving. I bet you most of you are looking at this after Thanksgiving, Monday night of the worst case scenario. So this problem here, Mr. Stevenson is pulling some oxidizers. I hope he's being careful. Drawing a free body diagram first is important. So just on this little box I just made up here, I'm going to draw an arrow for his pull. And uh, that's a given piece of information. So that's good to write the number. Like I've been saying, try to reuse the word. That's really what I want to see is that you're identifying what it is. There's uh, definitely a friction force involved that's opposing the sliding. And it doesn't look like we know that. And then there's an upward force from the surface that it's sliding across. That's a normal force. And then it's attracted to the earth. That's the weight force. And we were given the mass, so we're going to have an easy time finding the weight. Um, on the test, you don't have to do it right up here. I'm just doing it to keep it compact. And I'll show you the work. I shouldn't get too lazy. Mass times the acceleration of gravity, 15 kilograms, substituting with units, 9.81 meters per second squared. That's on page one of the reference table. Now time for the calculator. Jump the gun there. I'm under time pressure today trying to get these videos done. All right, so there's the weight. That means the normal force is equal to 147 newtons groovy. And uh, what do we want to know? Um, this is a really tough question because you're not getting led through it. We want to actually, you know, find the mu so that we can use the reference table to identify what these two things may be made out of, right? So we're going to have to go to page one of the reference table. So uh, what else did they tell us? The acceleration, right? So this thing is accelerating. So that makes me um, want to, and you know, I've, maybe your first instinct, let me back up a step, is to use this equation, right? But we don't know this yet. Right, so we have to figure that out th with a different equation. Um, we're going to need to figure that out so that we can use page one of the reference table. So we're going to come back to that equation, and we're going to use. And I've been getting you ready for this. I don't know if I feel like I've been getting ready for this, but I'm getting. I've been getting you ready for this. We're going to use this equation, and this is the whole thing with the stupid x, right? Where we don't know what this is, we'll call it x, and we do know it's accelerating in the direction he's pulling it, right? So six meters per second squared. So that's going to be going in for the A. What's that down there? Look at that. I must be getting ready for the future. He's pulling it with 174 newtons. That's not the net force. The net force will be whatever the friction is subtracted from that 174, right? This is the tricky part. And you see how we'll be able to solve that for X? That'll be the friction force, right? So I'm going to take 15 times 6. We had another one like this. I remember that coming out to 90 before. And then 174 minus x. Um, and then I bring x over here by adding it to both sides. And I subtract the 90 from 174. Look at me. I need a calculator for that. Come on. 84. So that's the friction force. 84 newtons. All right. Marvelous. And so now we're almost ready for you. Not quite. We're going to go to that equation I wrote earlier. This is also on page 6 of the reference table. Solve it from you. And now we get to put numbers in there. All right. 84 is the friction force we just figured out, and the normal force was, I can't remember, uh, 147. Look at those Newtons cancel out, right? It's very, so satisfying. All right, let's see, 84 divided by 147, and I get 0. 0.57. And so now we look over here. So this is the part that we've been waiting for, right? And this is, you know, a pretty challenging question. It's not like the most challenging question. He's sliding it, right? So we're paying attention to these, right? Not these, because that would be starting to slide it and looking for the... There it is. So it's, it's, it's possible that the box and the table's hopper made out of steel. Steel on steel. Steel on steel. All right. So uh, the... Google assignment that's getting put up will have a first a link to this video, right? And then you're going to finish the packet. Uh, the packet has this on it, right? And these are pretty straightforward, I think. In fact, you know, I'm just asking pretty dopey questions like number five here. What is mu basically? Uh, 
I'm just th want you to tell me like roughly what it is. If you never know what something is, go to the reference table, solve for the mu, and then describe that in words, right? Um, I don't think this one is fairly unique. I just want to point this one out because we didn't do an example like this in class. The maximum force of static friction. That means you're going to look up the mu static from that chart. And then you're going to need to figure out the normal force. So that's not the normal force. That's the mass. So find the weight. Weight is equal to normal force. And then you'll get to use the new equation with that static coefficient that you've got to look up on page one of the reference table. OK? OK. I'm trying to help you here. All right? So I appreciate you. I appreciate you watching this because not everybody has been, right? So I'm trying to reward the people, not yelling at the people watching this. Or why would I yell at you? Um, this is pretty much like the examples from class. So Mr. Stevenson is so busy. Look at him. He's pulling dry ice in this question. He just doesn't get a break. Um, that's the uh, dry ice is what they're using to keep the uh, RNA vaccine cold, right? It's got to stay pretty cold. So uh, the other thing, the, the last part of the assignment, I will put a PDF of this up, which is an old review packet. Uh, I am not, listen to me, I don't, I'm not trying to burden you, but on the other hand, you need to practice and people are getting these castle learning questions wrong. So uh, I am giving you this whole packet that you can look at and, you know, look through the questions. If you want to do the bare minimum, you should look at some of these questions and try to do them informally and check. I'm also putting up the answers, right? I'm putting up where, where are we? There's the multiple choice, right? So the answers are going to are right there in Google Classroom. So, um, you know, do the do the work. And I, my advice, going back to like the, the bare minimum, would be to pick around the multiple choice, check your answers. Uh, more multiple choice, more multiple choice. The where are we want? To, I would take advantage of doing some more of these free response questions. These are from the maroon textbook, snapshotted, so you don't have to open up the stupid textbook. Especially like four, five. Three, I think those are fairly tricky too. I, you know, I would look at those, and make sure that'll be getting you ready for some of the trickier free response questions that could come on the next test. And I hope you you had a great Thanksgiving. All right, we'll see you on Tuesday. Take care.